What's going on Twitch and YouTube? Zero Elite here. I'm back with a new video, episode 28 of the USS Cerrito tutorial. I just want to thank you very much for tuning into today's video. And if you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and helping me and supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. Today we've got about a 37 minute video. We're going to be getting some stuff and things done. We've uh, still got a ton of work to do on this ship on both the inside and outside. Uh, today we're going to be getting a little bit more detailing done on the exterior of the ship, uh, specifically on the saucer section. I've talked a little bit about this in previous episodes that we're going to be working on getting some detailing done and trying to add in some additional layers to bring this ship to life. So we're going to start off with our bridge. Uh, we need needs a little bit of love. We're going to try to add in a little bit more of uh, elements that we've already got here. So I'm going to start with my corners here. I'm going to take off that half slab, and then I'm going to take off two rows of the full gray blocks. Actually, I'm going to take off this whole front row. But it's only going to go two in for the cut. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Let's bring that one more back on this side. This way we can do a half slab. We'll go with the cut line. That'll look a little bit better. Now here, we're going to do half slabs. That looks pretty good. Gives us a nice bit of uh, extra detailing there on uh, the bridge area. It kind of sucks um, on the Cerritos. The bridge area on the outside actually does not have a ton of detail. You know, this is kind of what we, we've got to work with. So I've been trying to think about some other ways that I can make it come out, you know, look a little bit better. And that's really all I've got at this point. But I think adding those extra couple of extra blocks, uh, the half slabs, and slightly reworking the top side and the front, uh, like we just did, um, really helped. Now, we're going to be adding another ring to our saucer. Now, this is not a situation I typically like to be in, but because um, I like to, if you know me and you watch my YouTube channel, know that I like to do my circles all at once with the pixel circle generator but I wasn't actually intending on adding another circle ring here but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat so I don't actually have to go in the pixel circle generator I'm gonna use a ring that we already have and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ring from our inner circular corridor top portion of it and we're gonna use that to make the ring on the outside I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment Right now, I'm just trying to figure out what my next play is going to be at this point in the video. I'm not quite sure what I want to do, but uh, just to give you a heads up some of the stuff we're going to be doing. We're going to be reworking the just the line here. We're going to be adding in a different color right along the lip of the, word, the windows. And this is just a test what I'm doing right here with the half slabs. I really don't like this, so I think I'm going to switch to the gray concrete. Light gray concrete to be specific. I think the light gray concrete is just going to look a little bit nicer because we want a little bit of color on the edge here. You know, we don't want everything to blend in too much. And I think that adding in, going along that entire lip all the way around the saucer is going to be the way to go. Give us a little bit of extra detailing using what we already have. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks pretty solid, and I think we can make that work. This is just basic pinstriping, and this is one of the things I've talked about in the past. Knowing the amount of detail to put into your ship, and not doing a ton of extra stuff to the point that you've just got a bunch of crap all over the place. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this a little bit more subtly, because I don't want to add too much. But then again, the Cerritos does have a specific hull pattern to it. Um, I've been trying to mess with that a little bit to see if I can make something work. I haven't actually come up with anything just yet. I'm going to try to see if I can come up with a pattern before I'm done with this tutorial. Um, if for whatever reason I'm not able to, I may end up coming back to it. Um, but I don't know. I'll have to see where we fall at the end of this tutorial series. I may get to a point where I just don't want to change anything on it. Um, but I'm really not going to know where I stand on it until we're towards the end of it, but I do know that I want to try to do something else with the hull on uh, at least the saucer section, try to get a couple more elements out of the, uh, uh, that the Cerritos would have. 
Another thing that we need is escape pods, and we're definitely going to be doing that on the Serratos, at least a facade for them. I don't know if we're going to add actual ports inside the saucer section to make it look like you can actually go up into an escape pod. Maybe we will if we have enough room to do it, but I at least want to have the ports on the outside of the ship showing because um, that's something that you can definitely see on next generation era ships. Um, another thing that I'm doing right now, going along this lip, changing this to the, uh, the light gray uh, concrete, um, is uh, we talked about in the last couple episodes when we reworked the lip, uh, we had the sacrifice by taking one row off of our windows that was looking a little bit weird. So this is our fix for that, by changing the color of this edge to this gray, I think it's actually going to look at, uh, look a heck of a lot better. And you'll see what I mean once we go through this whole thing and zoom around. You can see I'm just going to go right up through the yellow, and I'm going to stop right when I get to the shuttle bay. So you're going to want to do that going on both sides, of course. But we don't need to go across the shuttle bay because we're not actually going to have an area to build off of. You can see that looks so much better right there, having that gray line there as opposed to looking at the other side. I think it really does make a difference. I know I'm kind of doing this video late, actually really late tonight, because typically I do them between uh, 9 and 10 p.m., and uh, it's almost midnight my time. Sorry about that. I've had a lot of stuff going on today, uh, some personal stuff and things, but I wanted to make a point to get this video out, I'm trying to stand by my video schedule. Um, I've had a couple of times in the past where I wasn't able to get a video out on a, a scheduled day, but like I said, I've really been trying to make a point to meet that fulfillment of uh, if I say I'm going to put a video up, to put it up and keep with that consistency. Um, so I hope everybody definitely appreciates that. Despite the stuff I had going on today, I was still able to get on and uh, get this video out. I was actually kind of excited too because the changes that I'm putting into this um, that we're going to do in this episode, I think are going to be some of the elements that are going to help us to make this ship pop a little bit more and stand out over the top. Now, if uh, I believe I'm getting ready to do the right side of the saucer now, we're going to be switching that to the gray. Now, I don't think I'm going to show this because that's a little bit repetitive. I've already showed you one side, and I wanted to show that so that we didn't go over. something here I don't want to skip over. I don't want to show the repetitive stuff, but I just saw now why I recorded all this, and that's because when we get over those gray parts, there's two gray part uh, strips on each side of the saucer. We're taking the half slabs out behind them. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I talked about this last week when we, when we reworked the lip. We did not change this part right here. And I wasn't sure what to do then, and it was kind of eluding me, and then it just realized me, I'm making this way harder than it needs to be. My pattern's already here. So all I have to do at this point is just do white concrete behind, and then cut this gray out, and then do a half slab behind it, and then move this gray row back by one. And that's it. You can see I've already taken the white concrete out from that side, and I'm gonna do it right here, or excuse me, the half slabs. We're only doing it where this gray strip is. I wish I could call it something else, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just a cool looking uh, gray detail piece, and there's two on each side of the saucer. I could have left it alone, but that attention to detail is one of the many things that's going to help make your ship uh, come to life and look better. Um, because if we let this slide, you know what else are we going to let slide on this build? And when you start doing that, <coughs> Uh, ship will start slipping and you'll start to notice that not things aren't lining up the right way so that's really one of the re reasons why I'm doing this I want to stay consistent with the whole build and I want everything to um, match correctly I don't want anything looking out of place and this part right here can definitely distort the saucer so we want to make sure that we nail that Or I just deleted with white concrete. Very simple. Alright, so far looking good.
before I do anything else, <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing to the other sides. Even though I already know the um, steps I'm going to be taking, just to stay consistent. Because this is one of those areas where I could just do one at a time. But I'm, um, I'm a creature of habit, I guess you could say. And once I get used to doing things in a certain order, I just kind of stick to them. Because I found that sticking to that order usually helps to keep your build come out that much more consistent. It seems like a stupid rule, but I tell you, it has saved me a couple of times from making mistakes. So that's definitely one of the reasons why I do it this way. I don't want to get too far ahead in each section if I'm doing the same thing all over. I'll just go and do the same thing on all four, and I'll just keep doing uh, every change I make. I'll just do the same thing all four as I go. We've got two more steps to complete on these strips. Now we've got to take away that single strip right behind them, and we're going to place that with half slabs. Then we're going to come back one more time, and then right behind those half slabs, we're going to be moving this gray line one back, just where the half slabs were. spot out a mistake there just by sticking to my pattern and when you start getting in that mindset in your building it'll definitely uh, help save you yourself from making those same mistakes and I don't know why the other day this didn't occur to me I think I was more concerned at the time of making a mistake um, which I'm known for that sometimes I <clears throat> I won't want to change something right away if uh, I'm not certain about it, or I'll be very cautious as I'm doing it, and this was just one of those cases. But I do think the change that I'm making here was essential. It's really going to help the ship stand out a little bit more, and uh, I think it's going to look good. Didn't look like that area was messed up, but if you scroll back, watch it to right before I changed it, it does look different, and I think it uh, looks better now that we made that change. Because that's something that can definitely be tricky, which is one of the reasons why I don't usually like to mess with the lip of my ship too much once I, once I have it down, and that's because once you really start messing it with it, you can totally distort your circle. Um, if you start adding layers to it or taking layers away, either way you go, whether you make it bigger or smaller, as, every time you add a layer, you are um, basically uh, deteriorating your circle every time you do that. And I've learned that the hard way, um, just by um, building these ships out over time. Because I've tried to do it too, you know, I've tried to cheat um, and uh, get around it, and there's really no way around it figured the uh, way I see it there's only when you're in a situation like this you got to work with what you got unless you want to completely reshape your lip which I've done that before it's no fun and uh, if I can save anybody else that headache <laughs> I can tell you right now don't don't mess with your lip once you've got your perfect circle you can maybe add one more row to it before you're you're gonna distort it, maybe two. Once you start getting out past that, and even then, as you start adding rows, you're every time you're deteriorating the integrity of your perfect circle, which is one of the reasons why we use a pixel circle generator. Because building a perfect circle freehand in Minecraft, <coughs> Minecraft is virtually impossible. That is the only thing that you'll ever see me reference as a blueprint. Because I do get asked by people all the time when I'm doing these ships, they're like, yo, where's your blueprints at? I want to build this thing myself. But I'm showing you right now, this tutorial, this is my blueprint. It's all in my head. I'm literally just winging this thing, looking at pictures, different screenshots that I can find, 3D models, anything that I can use as a reference to um, use for details. Because the more references you have, the better this thing is going to come out. Alright, 
Alright, we were looking pretty good, we're almost done. I was gonna skip uh, past this, but I felt it was relevant only because it goes up to the lip of the saucer, or excuse me, the lip of the shuttle bays, and I wanted to show that, and uh, I banged that out in just a moment. But we still have uh, quite a bit of time left. We've already shot through the first 13 minutes, and we still got about 23 minutes left in today's episode. Like I said, kind of a long one today, about 37 minutes. But I've been wanting to make a point to uh, get out as much stuff as I can in each video without making them long to the point that uh, people aren't watching them. So I'm trying to stay within that, you know, 20 to 30 minute range within there. Alright, so now we're going into the saucer section. I'm literally just making a hole so I can get in here. Um, I'm going to clear out a couple of these blocks here and there, but really not going to mess with this too much. Really my main goal is to get into the inner circle corridor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up, go through the row of our sea lanterns. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to delete the sea lantern and we're going to delete the blocks above them. And that's how we're going to get our circle. Sure, there's an easier way to do it. You could just go on Google and type in pixel circle generator and um, go to the very dead center of your saucer and count out the width of it but this is going to be a little bit easier it's really not too much of a, of a big deal for me at this point to me i feel like <clears throat> it's easier to do it this way and not have to worry about the pattern of the pixel circle when we've already got it down Now I'm just now realizing what I just told, told you all we're going to be doing, and we're going to go around the entire inner corridor. Every time we see a sea lantern in the ceiling, we're going to take it out. Only in the inner circle corridor. And don't worry about it cutting through the yellow line, we'll fix that. I'm zooming on the outside because I want to make sure this is where I want my circle at. One of the reasons I'm doing this circle is for that said hull detailing that's to the serrators. Um, I, I wanted to add this in to build the detail off of that. And I'm going to try to mess with that a little bit uh, throughout this week and uh, see where I fall on. But uh, I was actually on Minecraft a lot this weekend. I got a lot done. Um, my shuttle bay is, I don't want to say it's complete, but it's probably like 80% complete. You might be thinking like, well, that's not very much, but when you see this thing, and you see the size of it, you're going to be like, well, darn, how did he get that done in the weekend? Because I'm actually really excited to show you all the shuttle bay on the Cerritos, because um, I think it came out awesome. i got to be honest with you, it looks really cool, and I think it's going to help sell the size the scale of this thing i think it's going to make the ship look even bigger um, i think engineering is going to help sell that too um, i can honestly say right now that on the serratos both the shuttle bay and the engineering are the biggest ones that i've done so far they're bigger than both the uh, engineering and the shuttle bay that i've done on uh, enterprise uh, discovery enterprise and the enterprise a the only shuttle bay that i've done that's bigger than this one is the vengeance but it's really not. Um, I think this one is actually bigger. Vengeance is just taller. It's got more decks on it. But I think the actual real estate, the Serratus is going to be taking up more room. And it's cool. Um, I kind of reference a little bit off of Next Gen to come up with my shuttle bay area. Because if you look at the next generation, that thing has several different shuttle bays. Um, and they're all interconnected from my understanding of it. And, you know, it kind of goes to the cargo area and whatnot, and that got me to thinking, you know, if the Serratos has two shuttle bays, it would make sense to have them be jointly connected, you know? And that's just kind of what led me into building it that way. And, uh, I again, you know, I, I did use references from the Serratos. I didn't want to try to stay true to it, but build within what made sense for this ship. 
Um, I hope everybody likes it because I did kind of take a few liberties with it, but I really didn't because it's kind of like a mix between like the Cerritos and uh, the Enterprise D shuttle bay, which I think would be fitting because like 99% of the stuff on the Cerritos was referenced off of the Enterprise D anyway. So I think it's probably going to work out more than you think that it is at this point, but um, we'll get into that. Um, we're not there yet. I think we're definitely going to be getting on that episode this week. If not this week, then next week. Um, but uh, I'm really trying to make a point to get this thing going on the interior and complete it without having any gaps. Um, but uh, I need to finish up engineering. I need to finish up the shuttle bay. But uh, now that I've got those two areas completed, those are two of the biggest sections on my ship. Now I can start figuring out where some of the other rooms are going to go. Uh, one of the rooms I'm actually really looking forward to building, believe it or not, is uh, the holodeck. Um, I think I might want to build two of them at least. I think I'm going to build one that is off, so I can do that black and yellow checkered pattern in that room. And um, then I'm going to do another one that's like been activated, and like I'll build a scene out or something. I think that'll look pretty cool. So anyway, right now we're just going back and we're putting back our sea lanterns right where they were before. So we have a perfect circle cut out. We're looking pretty darn good here. Now we're just going to do gray. I missed those first two rows, but I didn't do those on purpose because I think I'm going to fill those in yellow, or at least one of them. Now you will see that there's a tiny gap in the very dead center on the x-axis points for the circle. So the top and bottom, well, the top and the two sides in this case. We're not filling those in just yet. In a few moments, I'll show you how to fix that gap. Right now, we're just filling in the holes with uh, light gray concrete. And I gotta be honest with you, even if we don't really do that much uh, stuff other than the stuff, the things that we do today to the hull, I think it's gonna look really good. But I'm certain, I just know how I'm going to be. There's going to be other stuff that I'm going to want to do on the Cerritos on the outside. And uh, I think there's one or two things that I'm going to be doing that I did too over the course of uh, the videos that I recorded over this weekend. So for anybody curious if we have stuff to do on the outside or if we're done, we still have stuff to do. We still have a ton of stuff to do. Um, I won't say that the interior or the exterior on the ship is done until I'm done with the build. Because there could always be something that you can add. And... Um, I think anybody that, you know, they're rushing to get through it, stop what you're doing, stop rushing. If you're rushing, um, take your time. Uh, I'd suggest taking your time with it because rushing a build like this is the fastest way to make a mistake. If you're in a rush to get this thing done, um, you may have problems. So definitely take your time with it. Because, you know, I, I definitely understand how exciting it can be. Especially like after you get your wireframe up of your ship, you start filling in your hull and like it starts taking shape. You know, trust me, I get it. You know, you start getting really excited because you know you want to see what this thing's gonna look like done. But trust me, take your time with it. We spent this much time working on it, and it's gonna pay off. Definitely a rhythm to and rhyme to my madness try to do things as organized as I possibly can. I'm going to take off that first block right there. I need to take that one off. I'm zooming out to verify it. Even though I just did the exact same thing on the other side. I will get paranoid like that and zoom out and just double check to make sure that I'm gonna get ready to delete the correct block here. But it's this lower right hand one we gotta get rid of. We're just gonna swap that out with a white concrete block. There we go. And we're looking good. Now 
that block I need to move over by one, because that is directly across, the same goes in the pattern. This one, that one, and that one. So we're going to go over to the other side and verify that. Let's see, check that. Let's see, it goes boom, boom, boom. So we need to actually move that over, I think. Or we need to adjust this one. Which is definitely a possibility. I have the advantage right now of watching this after the fact of already building it. So I may catch things that I may not be noticing as I'm building it. But those last two blocks, it doesn't look like I fixed that. We're going to have to go back and correct it. So I'm going to go back off camera and check to see if I fixed it. If I didn't, then I'm going to record a thing of me doing that just so you all have the same exact thing that I do. Because that placement right there in those last two blocks, I'm kind of iffy on it. Because one side is not matching the other, and you don't want that. You want both sides to match. Alright. So anyway, we'll get back to that. Um, like I said, I'll do a video on that in the next couple of days and add that in. Right now, we're going to start working on our skate pods. You can see I'm just going off the cut line of the blue. I'm just doing a single two by two square. I'm skipping the block. I think I'm going to do these in, in patterns, maybe three or two. Depends on how much room we have here. Maybe three. And so we really don't have enough room here to do anything else in the dead center. So in the center part, we can only do two on each side. But I think that'll look pretty good. Now there's a way to do this, and the easiest way is to go off of the X access points. So we're going to be going over to the left side, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're just going to repeat the process that we just did. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way out to the corners. That's the smartest way to build this out because we don't know exactly the placement. And what I'm going to be doing is relying on the blue ring as my placement point. All right, so now we're going to go over to the right side of the ship. Fix that real quick. All right, we're in good shape. We got three more blocks or three more escape pods placed down now too. And I'm not gonna lie, doing the escape pods uh, was something that I was originally I was sweating it because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I just started thinking about it, and this pattern that I came up with was so simple and. Um, I think it really does make a difference, like, I'm actually, at the end of this episode, I'm super happy with how the outside of this ship looks. Um, are we done with it? Like I said, we're definitely not done, we've got more stuff to do on it. Because um, I still need to figure out the pattern that I'm going to do, uh, if I'm going to add any more, like, uh, Aztec pattern uh, to the Hall of the Saucer, which I could very well do, but I'm not sure yet. All right, so what I did here on this side was I skipped a row, I went up one with a cut, and then I added a block, and then I went up one with a cut and added a block. So we're going to do the same thing on the left side. So I'm using this cut to dictate kind of where I'm putting these blocks. I'm making sure that there is a one a white concrete gap in between them, just like right here. So we're staying consistent with our build. I was going to have it going off to the corner right here, and then I could have had this one going off the corner, which still very well could end up being a thing. Um, but what I ended up doing here, it doesn't look bad. So let's just run with what I do have. But there is a couple ways that you could have done this is what I'm getting at. And I think it still would have looked good.
I'm just counting them out the gap in between them. See if they're spaced out enough. Now the one's going at an angle. I think we can get away with doing three. Because that's originally what I wanted. And what I'm going to do on this side is what I just talked about. Going off of the actual cut corner and seeing if that looks any better. And then we're going to zoom out and compare them and see which one we like more. And that is the best way to do it if you're trying to decide on uh, um, what you want to add. If you're not sure, try it one way and then do it a different way on the other side and then compare it. That's the best way to do it. So then you can see right there in real time instead of trying to envision it in your head what it looks like. Alright. So let's zoom out and take a look. Hmm. like the one on the left. I kind of like the one on the right too. I'm doing the pattern off of the right, obviously, because I'm not going off the actual cut corner. I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. Because they just feel like they're spaced out better this way, I don't know. pretty good with that uh, recording, but every once in a while I get a little bit of a hiccup with the background stuff going on in my computer. Alright, let's fill these in. And we have to correct the alteration of the variant that we had on the right side of the ship. There is a slight chance I may not update it in this video if I don't, like I said, you know, when I make that other change to like the inner ring that we added, I'll fix uh, what we're doing with uh, the skate pods. But I think they look so cool, just the fact that they're here and on the hull. Um, I've never seen a ship in Minecraft that even has the facade for them. Um, they always forget to put them in, I don't know why, you know, it's, this is just attention to detail, looking at what's on the ship. It's killing me that I've completely forgot this thing right here that I did. So I'm trying to do right now is figure out if I want to add any. I want to do some right going along here, maybe. could definitely do. Just have them going at an angle. You can do them right here and then right there. way to do that would be to go off the exact middle which is this row right here because you've got three singles so obviously it would be the middle one very easy to figure out what the center is here and we can build our square off of that middle row we'd have to skip one row in the white concrete but we could definitely do it let's throw it down to see what it looks like and we're doing a different angle of the square basically a diamond this is going caddy corner now
I don't think I'm going to waste the time to um, go on video and fix this part right here, but if you have that same alteration on your ship, make sure to correct that so it reflects uh, the other placements on um, your skate pods. But I think this, this looks so awesome. It's so simple what we're doing right now, but it's really going to help, you know, make this thing come to life. Not one of these things by themselves is going to sell it, but when you start adding all this stuff together, you end up with something that looks like this. I do think, though, after we add this last corner, I think we might be done with uh, the skate pods. Because we don't want to do too many of them. Because it's not like a case that the shuttle pad or the skate pods are like lining the hull. They're really not. Um, and I think uh, what I have here is more or less about how they look on the Cerrado. So I will say that the placement on them is not exact. I just kind of looked at the picture and then went back to my ship and I looked at where I should place them and just kind of went off that and kind of combined them together. But I noticed that they kind of went in a pattern like this where they were in like groups of twos or groups of threes. Um, but I think that looks really good. And that's what I'm talking about, being conservative with the amount of detail that you're adding because somebody uh, else doing this could have just been like, well, you know what? I'm just going to go ham on these escape pods just going all the way around here and then maybe that messes your build up. Maybe it's just too much detail, you know? But that's just enough right there. I think the ship, I mean, she's really starting to come out really good. I'm really surprised with the amount of detail that we've been able to pull out of this ship. And I've been surprising myself with this build because I'm not going to lie, you know, I wasn't certain how well this was going to come out because I've never built a ship like this before. Never built any ship from Next Generation era, really. This is my first attempt at it, other than the mock of the Enterprise D, but that doesn't really count because it's a, it was a tiny ship, you know? But this thing's coming out great. I love the changes that we're making to it, and uh, we're definitely making some progress on this thing. We've gotten some stuff done. Um, what else? I think that's... Uh, Still got about a minute left um, before we wrap this thing up. Uh, what else do you want to see me do on this build? Is there any other detailing that you want to see me do while I'm still working on it? Is there any rooms that you want to see me add in the interiors? Is there any things that I'm forgetting? You know, drop a comment below. Even if I've already thought about it, you never know. Because um, there's a couple of rooms that I wasn't planning on adding on the Discovery Enterprise, and I had people commenting on it, and I was like, okay, you know, I'll show that room. Like, uh, Arbitorium. I wasn't going to show that, and then I had like 10 people ask for it. I was like, alright, I'll build one. So definitely let me know in the comments section what stuff you want to see on this build while I'm still working on it, because once I move to the Enterprise D, uh, I'm pretty much going to be done on this thing. I'm not going to be coming back to it. Not unless I decide to um, add in that extra hull detailing, if I can't figure that out by the end of the tutorial series. Um, but we'll play that by ear. We'll see where we land at. But I do think that's going to wrap us up. We've gotten a lot done today. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to today's video. If you did enjoy this content, if you please help me out. Hit that like and subscribe button and helping me and support the channel. I definitely appreciate it. New subscribers, don't forget to hit that notification on so you get notified of my new videos drop. And speaking of new videos, don't forget you can always catch my new live streams at twitch.tv forward slash zero elite. And I always have new live streams dropping Sundays through Thursday nights, typically between 9 and 10 p.m. Also, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Zero Elite. You can always catch my new Starship Evo builds on Mondays. And my Minecraft videos dropping Tuesdays through Fridays. Those videos on YouTube drop at 10 a.m. Eastern. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me. I just want to thank everybody again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope everybody has a happy and safe week, and I'll catch you on the next episode.